Hello, my name is Jean Tirol and I'm a professor of economics at the Toulouse University, the Toulouse School of Economics, and also the founder of the Institute for Advanced Study in Toulouse, which is a pluridisciplinary institute with many fields of social sciences. So I strongly believe that economics is a moral and philosophical science, but for that we need to define what the common good is. And the best that we have probably is a veil of ignorance. Uh, imagine that you are not born yet, and what kind of society would you like to live in? Just run this thought experiment. It's not easy, but we have to try to do that. And we have to actually make this world a better place. Of course, we can be conflicted. We can have financial or friendship conflicts of interest. We, are, we may have a political fight. We might have various other things. But in the end, uh, our job, and I strongly feel it has to be uh, defending the common good and making this world a better place. Well, the thing is, uh, during COVID, I saw that globalization will remain because the value chain are in planes. Uh, companies have invested in, in various countries and actually the value chains have worked pretty well during COVID. We kept uh, getting f stuff in our supermarket and the like. So I thought things will return to normal. But of course, with the war in, in Ukraine and with the geopolitical tension, it's different because now people are worried about putting their money in, in unfriendly countries or they want to to, to produce at home, not to be blackmailed by other countries. And in, in a sense, globalization, which has been pretty good for our countries, the rich countries, except for you know, not protecting the losers enough, and has been extremely good for the poor countries because globalization has helped them develop. We are at the right risk of losing it because globalization requires a peaceful environment. Otherwise, people will, countries will be doing friendsharing, so they will basically buy at home and you know with their friends, and that will be it. And that will be much more expensive, I think. Uh, but if we don't have peace, we cannot have globalization. Well, the modern version of the state is a state which is a powerful regulator with a strong regulator to correct market failures. Um, it also has to provide the infrastructure so that the, the companies can operate. Uh, it could be an internet infrastructure, it could be a legal infrastructure, roads and so on, and defense, of course. But it's not a producer. I mean, actually, the states are not that good a producer because uh, they tend to choose CEOs, you know, managers who are friends of the political power. They have no out budget constraint, they are bailed out in case of financial difficulties and so on. Um, so actually the, the state is no longer a producer, but rather it's an, a referee, some kind of powerful regulator which is going to correct market power, information asymmetries, who is going to correct inequality because of course it's another market failure and so on. And now whether we are going to get industrial policy, probably yes. Uh, because people want an answer to the crisis. Um, we need industrial policy to get breakthrough innovation, for example, for, to fight climate change. That's required, but we have to do it well. And our countries often don't do it well because we need to set up agencies which are independent of political power. We want those agencies actually to have real managers who are going to select the fights and know where to put the, the funding, are going to stop the project when they don't work, are going to give the money where the soil is fertile, so where you have the people who are going to make it happen. Uh, all those things is a governance environment which often we don't have in Europe. And we have to learn how to do industrial policy right. But if we do industrial policy right, then it can be considered because it can have many advantages in terms of innovation, as we have seen, for example, in the US with DARPA, with the uh, National Institute of Health, with the National Science Foundation, which has promoted good science and not politics uh, within industry. So economists don't have the answer to every, everything. They have to be humble. At the same time, they have a lot of knowledge that they have to share. But they have to share it 
not in the jargon of our profession. Of course, it's efficient for us to communicate among ourselves or with experts using jargon, but we have to try to explain things in a simple way. Because if that's the case, then the reader can understand without necessarily being an economist. And that's what I've been trying to do. Uh, before the Nobel Prize, I basically talked to experts in ministries, in central banks, in industry, and so on. But in the end, it's very important actually to have the knowledge disseminated, uh, disseminated to a broader audience. And this is not going to happen if we make this uh, knowledge learning very hard to do. We need to, economics is fun, actually. And I strongly believe that economics is fun, but you, make, you have to make it accessible to people. And that's what I've been trying to do in this book, Economics for the Common Good. Thank you.